do you all know how to store your rice long term? That seems to be the biggest question on my channel. Last year or so, I was, since I've done my main video on my channel, my number one video, DIY How to Store Rice the Right Way, which has over 22,000 views, I've got a ton of comments and emails sent to me with a lot of different questions and everything else. Today's video, we're going to be answering a lot of those questions. So, you ask me, how do I store my rice? What's the best way to store rice? I bought a 25 pound bag. Do I just take and put it in a bucket in a five gallon Marlar bag and put oxygen absorbers in there? I'm gonna tell you why I don't do that. So white rice, more commonly known as polished rice, is a main food source for over half of the world's population. Isn't it just like freaking amazing? I mean, that's mostly what most people eat. We're going to be putting some of this into our jars. We're going to use the large mouth attachment that goes with the vacuum sealer. And we're going to seal those up and we're going to do them a couple different ways. We're also going to use the bags and seal some up in the bags, vacuum seal those. And then we also have some Marla bags. And I'm going to show you how I do that myself without buying the Marlar bag sealer before I package it in any way, shape, or form. It has to be room temperature and dry. Storage conditions. The best temperature to store your grains, your rice, and everything else is at 40 degrees. Now, most of us can't do that, all right? So if you had a root cellar, a basement, something like that, where you could store any of your dry goods and everything else, and you keep it at that 40 degree mark, that is just optional. I mean, that's just the, the cat's meow right there, folks. I mean, that's just what they're looking for. And parboiled rice stored from one year to 30 years, all right? And found that both types of rice will keep their nutritional value and their flavor for 30 years. So there you go. I mean, that's why everybody is here right now is because you wanna know about rice because rice, like I said, is the versatile product that you wanna have in your preps. But just remember one thing, if you're storing it like this, or if you're putting it inside a Marlar bag, it doesn't need to be a food grade bucket. Okay, so we filled up our jars, all right, with the rice. Looks like it was about half of a 10 pound bag was four large jars. We're going to put a bay leaf in each jar. These bad boys open. If you notice, they're if they're if they're good, they're real flimsy and everything else. And when they are not good, they are as hard as a rock that you went outside and you picked up. So we're gonna put one, we'll do it in this one here because that one's not as full. Buy your rice at the stores and stuff. Always check your bags and stuff. Turn them, you know, move them around and make sure nothing's falling out. If something's falling out, throw it back on the shelf. Don't take that one. Pick another one. Save yourself the money. Just buy a regular like Home Depot or Lowe's bucket and a regular size lid. All you need to put this on with is a rubber mallet. And you can use a hammer if you have to. And you need a lid puller. $1.99. Boil your jars and your lids in hot water on the stove. Uh, some people put them in the oven and heat them up and, and sanitize them that way, but you still have to do the lids and stuff on the stove in a pot of water. Now, we take our little attachment here, pull this out, detach this, because this is for bags and stuff. It has a lot of cool features. And I've done a video on my uh, vacuum sealer here. So you take this, you push it down over, you hit the accessory button. And when it does that, it's done. You wanna stay away from the moisture ones, just use that as a oxygen absorber, putting it in, into your, inside the bucket. If you really wanted to go that far, I would not recommend it. My opinion, you don't even need them, but I'm sure somebody will ask this question. Yes, you could put that inside of the bucket and then load up your food that's already been vacuum sealed and Mylar bagged and put it into your bucket if it makes you feel all comfy. This little thing down here, you see the little red light comes on, says it's sealing. You can go ahead at that point, you can open this up and then you can set here and you can do your bags, okay? Now, I'm gonna make up some bags. 
and everything else. And then we'll get the sealant. Pack that away. And if there's still moisture in there and you put that bad boy into your Mylar bag that you just spent a lot of money on, all right? And you all saw the video I did on Monday about Mylar bags and how much money you spent for the oxygen absorbers and the time to do it. Um, down the road, you go to open this bag and if there was still moisture in here, folks, guess what? It's gonna be nothing but mold. You ain't gonna be able to eat it. How to do this. Don't go anywhere, people. Don't you click away because you're gonna miss the best thing. We separated the 10 pounds of rice into two one gallon Mylar bags. The iron is just about ready. So we're gonna go ahead and get going here. So we're gonna throw some bay leaves in here. Make sure that you get no product in where you're going to be sealing. So I found if you fold it this way, lay it down, and then scoot it back a little to where it's gonna just come right across just like this. And then you have to slide it back so that you're even on the two by four, all right? There's no creases, no nothing. Now, what I do to make sure you don't have to do this because as you can see, it looks like it went through all the way. In my own opinion, um, I would recommend that if you're going to be doing your food storage and you're going to be storing rice, beans, anything, spend the money and buy Mylar bags with auction absorbers. We took both these bags. Here's a total of 10 pounds of rice, three auction absorbers, bay leaves and we got those in there we've got our vacuum sealed bag here with three cups in each one and the four large quart large mouth jars if you want to skimp a little bit but still get the same security feeling that you have the products and you want to maybe put them into your buckets so you can keep them in a cool dry dark place go with vacuum sealing only if you really can do that because you know you put the oxygen absorber like in this one all right i'm gonna get 30 years out of this bad boy i'm gonna get 20 years out of the one without so it's better than nothing folks in the prepping world something is always better than nothing show you exactly how we do with doing the jars doing the vacuum sealing we did it a couple different ways you know we put an oxygen absorber in one and then the others we didn't and then in the rice with the Mylar bags and how we seal it with a piece of wood, two by four, whatever else, and an iron to try to save you money as the beginner. Because even though you're beginning, this is all very easy to do.